With all the injuries to the Braves starting rotation, do they need to go out and make a move? We'll answer that question and many more on today's episode of Locked on Braves. So let's get into it. You are locked on Braves. Your daily Atlanta Braves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome back to Locked On Braves, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. Also, make sure you check out my written work on the Braves over at bravestoday.com. And make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves. Send in any questions, comments, or feedback that you have for the podcast. A lot of today's episode will be fueled by the questions that you have asked on the podcast and we'll get to those in today's episode a mailbag edition of a locked on braves and thank you to everybody out there who let me know you are an every day or had so many great comments on the last youtube video everybody letting me know that you are an every day or so thank you so much for doing that kenneth McHenry, uh, another one out there docs cards always a uh, great follower and listener of the podcast. So many others, Cody Kirkpatrick, Ryan Brown, George Smith. Uh, so many of you out there. Thank you so much, uh, James Houston. Again, I'm telling you, there were so many out there every day. Locked on Braves listeners letting me know. David Ag- Agnesia as well. So thank you so much to everybody out there who's in every day. Or, uh, continue to let me know in the YouTube uh, comment section as well. Do appreciate hearing from you on that and glad that you enjoy these episodes and they help get you through your day. Today's episodes are brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. It's a Mailbag Friday episode of Locked On Braves. I apologize to those who were hoping to do this live on Thursday night, but had some power outages in the neighborhood that prevented me from doing that. But I will answer your questions, and we got a lot of them to get to. First segment's going to be all about should the Braves go out and sign somebody, trade for somebody to help in the starting rotation. Got several questions on that and some other players that you're curious if the Braves might go after. So first section here is really just going to be about who the Braves could be going after this season right now at the trade deadline as what we'll start off here with a lot of these questions that we have. First one coming from Double A, who says, Do you think the trade market is something we should visit while Freed and Wright are out, or do we mix it up between Schuster, Dodd, and Soroka? Beltfire had a similar question. Given the Freed and Wright news, as as well as the struggles Dodd and Schuster have shown in their starts, a veteran starter seems necessary. Do you see us trading for one in the coming months? So, Um, Again, a couple of other questions like this are very similar, but I wanted to group these two specifically together. Should the Braves be looking at the trade market right now? Yeah, without a doubt, they should. Now, is there anything out there? Probably not. And probably not anything better than what you are going to get between Schuster, Dodd, and Soroka. And I understand Bellfire's points when Schuster and Dodd have been up and had their opportunities, it's not been great. Although you can look at Dodd and say two of his starts were solid. His first one was really good. His last one was a quality start, even if I didn't think it was an overly dominant or encouraging start. The one in the middle, you know, he got banged up pretty good. But, you know, I still want to see what these kids have. So to answer Double A, the last part of Double A's questions, do you think we mix it up between Schuster, Dodd, and Soroka? I do. I think the Braves try to get through this next month, maybe through the next month as well, and see what they have in Schuster and Dodd and Soroka. We saw Soroka go on Wednesday or Thursday night on regular rest, and I think that's something the Braves are going to try to start doing now to get him ready to come up. And, you know, I know you look at the numbers for Soroka down there and they're not particularly great, but I watched him on Thursday night and, you know, Gave up a three homer, three run homer in that first inning. But outside of that, I mean, I I thought he looked pretty good. Now it's not over overly dominating stuff. And I've been saying for a while with Soroka, I think you have to lower your expectations and view him as that as a fifth starter. If he can get you through five innings of three earned or less, I think that's a huge win 
for Soroka right now. You got to really lower your expectations with him. He's not going to come back and be that top of the rotation guy that he was before, or at least not right now. The guy hasn't pitched in two and a half years. So, again, if he can just come back and give you that, uh, you know, I think you'll take that from e any of these guys. Honestly, Schuster, Dodd, Soroka, I don't think you're expecting any of these guys to come up and be top of the rotation type arms, but you would like to see them be able to come up and consistently give you five innings and keep you in the game. That's what you hope out of a fourth and fifth starter, which is what they would be right now. I mean, sure, hopefully eventually they continue to grow and get better and become more than that, but what the Braves are looking for right now and what they need with their offense. They need guys who can go out there and consistently give them length, give them five, hopefully a little bit more, and then keep them in the game and give the offense a chance. And can Schuster and Dodd and Soroka do that? I don't know. Uh, I mean, we don't know at this point. We don't have enough of a sample size, but I do think the Braves are going to ride it out with those guys. Should they be looking at the trade market? I mean, it's something – comes up that makes sense and they are, there's a veteran out there that they can get and not have to give up very much, then, and yeah, I mean, go for it. Why not? I, I think that makes sense, but it's, you're not going to get anything of significance at this point in the season. So you might as well just see what you have in these guys and if you can rely on one of them to ho hold down one of those rotation spots for the next – couple of months and then you'll see trade talk start to pick up you know late june early july is when you really start to see trades trade topics pick up and more people become available freed fan 54 says would you consider trading for a proven starter like zach grinky if the price is right i know he's past his prime but you can count on him to go out there every five days and compete and it would lessen the now heavier burden on dodd and schuster is Grinky really better than what Dodd, Schuster, or Soroka could give you? I, I don't know. Um, I, I think I think that it would be comparable. Look at look at the April start for Zach Grinky. Six innings, seven hits, one earn. You know, not bad. Five innings, six hits, three earn. Six six innings, four hits, four earn. Five innings, seven hits, four earn. Three and two thirds, eight innings, seven earn. That to me is a fourth or fifth starter. And I think Dodd and Schuster and Soroka can give you that. And you already have them in house. Now, Grinky will <clears throat> give you length. He's done that. <clears throat> he's given you at least five innings in seven of his eight starts this year. So, you know, he's at least giving you that every five days. So I, I understand that aspect of wanting to trade for somebody like Grinky. But what are you going to give up for Zach Grinky? What, what are the, <clears throat> what are the Royals really going to? get for him to say, hey, let's give up our veteran guy for you know, this no-name prospect that's probably not going to do much for us. I, I think the Royals would much rather they're a young team trying to rebuild, trying to turn a corner. I think they value having Grinky there as that veteran guy to kind of help their youngsters come along. So I, I don't see I don't see the Royals really doing it for you know next to nothing. Um, and I don't really know that Grinky's better than what the Braves already have for their fourth or fifth starter in house. So no, I, I don't see that being an option. The only, I, I guess, upside that Grinky gives you, or it's not even really upside, but is that he does give you length consistently gives you length. And, you know, that is something that I don't know that Dodd and Schuster and Soroka can give you right now. Uh, Norby says, should the Braves target the guys like Chris Archer, Michael Pineda, or Mike Miner for a minor league deal? Mediocre numbers, but have at least shown consistent mediocrity to add depth. Our razor thin starting pitching depth is uneasy to say the least. It's uneasy right now. Coming into spring training, I thought they had one of the dip deepest starting pitching staffs in all of baseball. I mean, we were talking about 10 or 11 deep, but you lose Ian Anderson for the year. Colby Allard's out for a while. Waskari Noah's out for the year. Max Fried and Kyle Wright are on the shelf right now, and suddenly that starting pitching depth is cut in half. Now, should the Braves go out and target those guys on minor league deals? Sure, absolutely. There's, in my mind, no such thing as a bad minor league deal as long as it's not blocking a prospect and holding them back. So, you know, they want to go out and get one of these guys on a minor league deal, give them a shot and add some of that depth for guys who have a ton of experience. I think it would be a great idea. And if that opportunity is out there, then I think they should be all over it. So, Again, I don't know who, who that is. I know you mentioned Archer, Pineda, Miner. I'm sure there's others out there. But, yeah, in my mind, you know, no such thing as a bad minor league deal, especially with the depth the way that it is right now. makes a lot of sense to go out there and try to get 
a veteran on a minor league deal to at least add to that depth. And then, you know, like perhaps uh, something clicks and they come up and give you, you know, a couple of good starts even just to kind of piece your way along until Freed and Wright come back. I think it would be a smart move. Whit Price, what's the scouting report for Acuna's brother and what do you think it would take to trade him? So I apologize. I still don't know how to say his first name, but he is a prospect in the Rangers system. I know the first name starts with an L, but really solid tools across the board. Um, you know, like his brother, a five-tool player, but maybe at a little bit lesser level, not quite as much power, but projects as a 270 hitter, 20 to 30 home runs and 30 plus stolen bases. I mean, you're talking about maybe future potential 30-30 type of guy at double A this year. He's slashing 313, 373, 453 with two home runs and 15 stolen bases. There are some questions if he can stick at shortstop, but a lot of people are starting to lean towards the fact that he could. And he's obviously blocked there with what the Rangers have going on. He's been playing mostly shortstop this year as well as second base. Swing looks very similar to his brother. So, you know, that's appealing in and of itself. Braves would have to give up several top pitching prospects in my mind to get him. I mean, he's the third ranked prospect in the Rangers system right now. Um, they do have Rangers have some pitching coming up. So, but that is probably the only way the Braves could swing a deal like that to give up, you know, an Orwood Murphy or a J.R. Ritchie and A.J. Smith Shaver. You know, they'd have to give up two or three of those guys, in my mind, to swing a deal for Acuna's brother. Uh, Tommy Johnson, what's the chances of getting Jock back? I think they're very slim. Uh, he's making a lot of money this year. Even if you trade for him at the deadline, he's you're still going to owe him like seven or eight million at that point. Um, and the Braves already have, you know, a lot of bats right now, things could change as we get towards the trade deadline, but I, I think the chances of Jock coming back this year are pretty slim. And then Freed Fan 54 also asked, what would you think about the Braves giving Ken Giles a chance? If all goes right, he could take our pin up a level, might be worth a shot for the right price, considering some of our guys' recent struggles. Again, I'll say most of the bullpen's recent struggles are around one guy in A.J. Minter. I think outside of that, the bullpen has been pretty solid for most of the year, but Again, I'll say it like the same thing I said when you're talking about the pitchers like Pineda and, and Archer. You know, if you can get these guys on a minor league deal or at the right price, it never hurts to add more depth for proven veteran guys who have had success. So, yeah, to your point, if the right if it's at the right price, why not? Why not take a chance on somebody who's had a lot of success at the big league level? All right, got a lot more questions to get to, but that was our – Trade segment piece, what should the Braves do at the starting rotation? Should they go out and get somebody? Who else could they be targeting? So I wanted to get all those questions out of the way first, but got a lot more to get to on our mailbag episode today. I'll answer all those questions here and next. So Rare is a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace, transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 MLB teams. You've heard of So Rare by now. We've talked about them a lot. They're on every commercial that you see because it's a very popular and fun game that you should definitely try out. I tried it out to begin the year and it has been a lot of fun collecting these cards, building teams together and competing against other opponents to win, you know, other cards to try to improve your team as the competition goes up. You can win even better prizes like game tickets, merchandise, signed jerseys, all kinds of great prizes as well. There's two cycles during the week, a three- and a four-day cycle, so multiple opportunities each week to try and win. It's a lot of fun, and if you haven't checked it out yet or you've been thinking about it and you want to help support the show, you can go to SoRare.com slash on to sign up to help support the show, and you get to play a really fun game. That's S-O-R-A-R-E dot com slash on to sign up and, and play. start playing today. The Braves resume play tonight against the Toronto Blue Jays at 7.07 p.m. Eastern. It will be Spencer Strider Day for the Atlanta Braves. You don't want to miss that. Catch every pitch of the Braves' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search the word Braves. Jumping back into our questions, Gabrielle Bonilla says, Murphy has been scorching hot in the new park and batting fourth has helped him. What is the probability of him continuing this streak? I mean, I talked about Sean Murphy the other day. We did it on our stat of the day Wednesday. He's currently on pace to have the best season ever 
by a Braves catcher. You can mind what he's doing offensively and OPS over a thousand, um, you know, throwing runners out with the, you know, smaller or the bigger bases, making stolen bases even easier. The effect that he's had behind the dish as well. I mean, I think he's one of the most valuable players in all of baseball right now. Can he keep it up offensively? That's unknown. We've never seen him hit like this, but, you know, I said it when the Braves traded for him. You go look at the second half of his season in Oakland last year. He got off to a dreadful start last season in Oakland, and then something clicked, and he turned it on. In the second half of last year, I mean, he was unbelievable at the plate, and that seems to have carried over into this season. So was that the hitter that he is now? Did something click for him, something change in the middle of last year, and he's all of a sudden just become one of the better hitters in all of baseball? We'll see. I mean, we're a month and a half in here. We got to see more than that, more than three or four months, you know, really of, of what we've seen so far with Sean Murphy. But it has been great. And, you know, he's just crushing everything. I mentioned the pitch he had the other day is 94, but it was about three or four inches up above the zone. And he was able to get up to that pitch and drive it off the left center field wall. I mean, he's just able to get to anything. I mean, he's he's unconscious at the moment. I hope it continues. I hope he continues to be in the lineup every day just because his bat is that hot, and especially with the way Riley's been struggling. It's been huge having him in the middle of the order. But, again, you look at the metrics and you look at his baseball savant page, which you know will typically indicate if a guy's been lucky. There's no luck involved. I mean, he's squaring up baseballs, and he's absolutely mashing right now. So there's no indication that anything he's done so far is you know the result of just some good luck. He's just making – good swings and he's putting the barrel on the baseball and when you do that you're going to have a lot of success but you look at his average exit velocity 91st percentile max exit velocity 94th percentile hard hit percentage 81st percentile expected slugging 100 percentile uh, barrel percentage 98th percentile a walk percentage 94th percentile i mean all everything indicating that he is just on another level at the moment and that it's going to continue. I mean, the only thing you can look at is his whip percentage is 36%, but we see that with a lot of Braves hitters and it doesn't seem to slow them down, but his chase rates only six in the 66 percentile, which is not terrible. And, you know, they also have framing and pop time on here. He's 82nd, 86 percentile in pop time and 94th percentile in framing. So again, doing it all, a lot of red on his baseball savant page, which, typically indicates this is no fluke. This is the type of hitter that he is. So I think it will continue, and I think he'll be one of the better bats for the Braves this season. Robert Mullis asks, players on the 60-day IL don't count against the 40-man roster. It gives teams free moves to add players to the roster who they would not have been able to. Could be a good place for Freed and Wright if the team sees some non-roster help. Does MLB limit the number on the 60-day IL. So I did look this up in the official rules page. It doesn't mention anything about a limitation on how many players you can put on the 60 day IL. So I'm going to say no. Uh, somebody wants to correct me on that. You can do so in the comment section below and point me to the link for that. But I could not find anything on the limiting the number of players you can put on the 60 day IL. But I would certainly consider putting right on there if they did need to add somebody to the 40 man roster. I don't know who that would be right now. Um, but if they did need to, they probably could at least put right there because I think he's going to be out for at least two months. So they definitely have that option right now. If they do want to add somebody to the 40-man roster, I think right is somebody they could look at bumping. And you can do it at any point. You can bump them to the 60-day IL at any point. So, yes, great point. I've said point now too many times. Apologize. Uh, but they could do that. Uh, they could move Kyle Wright or Max Freed. I'm hoping not Max Freed. I want him back earlier than that. But I think there's definitely a possibility of them moving Kyle Wright to the 60-day IL if they need to add somebody to the 40-man roster. Caleb Calhoun, when are we going to see Hilliard get a start in left field? Yeah, man, Hilliard kind of just got shoved out, and it was unfortunate. The guy was playing great for the Braves, and then you had some guys coming back, and Rosario, who was starting to swing the bat well, Michael Harris, and – Unfortunately, it's just been hard to find playing time for Hilliard. Also, about that time when Rosario was coming back, they were facing a lot of lefties, so he wasn't getting a lot of starts. And then, you know, again, Rosario heated up, and then Ozuna started to hit the ball again and looked like he was uh, actually a hitter in the MLB. So 
Yeah, just unfortunate situation for Hilliard. He was playing great and then just kind of got pushed out. And when he's come back, he hasn't looked great in the at-bats he's had sparingly. So, uh, yeah, just hate it for Hilliard. Opportunities just haven't been there for him lately. So I think it's going to take Rosario cooling off, Ozuna cooling off before we see Hilliard get another opportunity. RC, a fan account, what is the status of Colby Allard? Um, so Brian Snicker did say recently that he just started throwing. So I'd say is at least a month out, probably even longer. So I think we're talking about July, beginning of July, maybe before we can see Colby Allard back. Cause it's basically like starting spring training all over for him. He's going to, you know, start throwing and then he'll ramp up to throwing on a mound and then he'll throw a bullpen session. Then he'll face live hitters and then we'll start getting some rehab assignments. So, I think we're at least a month out from Colby Allard, but probably longer than that. Kristen, do you think there's a realm of possibility they'll go the route of stretching out a reliever? Litke should be back soon, and Danny Young has been impressive, so one could take over whoever's role in the bullpen if they did so. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a great question. With the way that Dylan Lee pitched the other day, I, I believe they got to be thinking about it. Um you know, you can do that for one spot in the rotation. You certainly can't do it for two. So they're still going to need one of Dodd, Schuster, or Soroka to step up in the rotation. I still lean towards the fact that they'll use two of those guys and that they won't go with a bullpen game every fifth day, especially they're about to have a stretch of 13 games in a row coming up. But again, I mean, it's a possibility. If you just go with four starters, it gives you an extra arm in the bullpen. Um, but yeah, it's risky for sure because you never, again, you never know what you're going to get out of those bullpen games. And then you risk, you know, wearing somebody out, you know, Dylan Lee going three innings, three or four innings every fifth day as a, as an opener. Um, but you know, I thought they did mostly good in that game the other day until late, like I said, mentor, and then Iglesias giving up the two run Homer. Uh, so, I mean, it's a strategy, and I think it's tough on teams when you're facing a different pitcher every time you go to the plate. So, I think there's some relevance to having a bullpen game and the effectiveness that it can have. It's just, again, I'll go back to the comment from Smoltz. You use six relievers in a game, one of them's bound to have an off day that day. Um, and so, that's kind of the risk you run into when you do a bullpen game like that. But as far as stretching somebody out, I think it would have to be Dylan Lee as somebody they could stretch out. Even if he can just give you four or five innings, you know, would they consider doing that? Is that better than what Dodd or Schuster could give you? He looked great the other day. Um, so we'll see. If there's anybody there, you know, I think it would be Lee. Jesse Chavez has plenty of starting experience in the past. He's somebody I could see them doing that with as well. But at his age, you know, maybe not quite as likely. But those would be my two candidates right there. Bellfire says, if Arcia keeps playing the quality defense and hitting he has so far this year is getting and extending him one of A's most underrated moves. Look, it's a great move regardless. Even if he doesn't turn out to be the, the long-term shortstop over the next two or three years, I mean, getting a bench player of his caliber and his experience at $2 million a year is a great move in and of itself, much less if he becomes the starter. If he becomes your starting shortstop, and he continues to play this quality of defense. And even if he just hits a little batting ninth, it's a great move. I mean, I don't know if it's underrated because I think it's a fantastic move. But you're right, probably nationally, it's not a move that many people have a lot of eyes on when they talk about all the extensions that Alex Anthopoulos has made over the years. They're probably not pointing or bringing up or mentioning the Orlando RC extension. But I think it's a, I thought it was a great move when it happened. And at that point, I thought he would be a bench player. But if he gets to play, he continues to play like this, and he's your starting shortstop, making two million a year. I mean, that's just one of his better moves at that point that he's ever made. Final question: Large Lar says, "Do you think that Chad Pender will get called up and take Shoemaker's spot so he can have reps every day?" Um, I think it has to be Adrianza who's on a rehab right now because they can't DFA Adrianza or they lose him. They can keep Pender there and stash him at triple a. So I still think it's going to be Adrianza that comes up and takes shoemaker's spot probably sometime next week. And 
yeah, again, as much as I, I like Shoemake and I want to see him get some opportunities, he needs to be down at AAA playing every day. So I'm welcoming the fact that whether it's Pender or Adrianza, they come back soon so Sh- Shoemake can get those everyday reps. But I like Pender. I mean, I think he's a good, you know, create some more depth for sure. Uh, and I think, you know, he could get an opportunity at some point if they ever decide to move on from Adrianza, but they love Adrianza um, for whatever reason. Um, but I think it'll be Adrianza who takes Shoemake's spot again sometime uh, later next week. All right, that's all the questions on today's Mailbag podcast. And next, I want to bring you some news. Braves did make another small minor league signing of a former top prospect. We'll talk about that next and then set you up for Strider Day on Friday as the Braves take on the Blue Jays. We'll discuss that here next. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater near you with all kinds of great last-minute deals and their better price guarantee so you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting excited for your upcoming event. I've used game time in the past for some last-minute tickets, and it was very easy to use, and they did have the best price out there when I bought my ticket and that's part of the game time guarantee which means you'll always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference snag the tickets without the stress with game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on mlb for 20 dollars off your purchase again you want to support this show ask people ask me all the time how can i help support the show use our promo codes and use some of these products if it makes sense to you and that's one thing you can do you're going to be buying tickets to games you might as well try on the game time app and use the code locked on mlb to get 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed all right teased it a little bit before the break the rave sign justice sheffield to a minor league deal former top prospect um yankees and mariners uh didn't really pan out for him, but you know, again, there's no such thing in my mind as a bad minor league deal. So maybe this guy, they can turn him around. He can become something, whether as a starter or as a reliever, you know, Braves have done a great job of developing pitchers in the past. So take a shot on this guy who was once a, once a former prospect and see what could happen. Now on Friday night, the Braves take on the Blue Jays, start a three game series in Toronto and it's Spencer Strider versus Chris Bassett. My keys for Strider are give the Braves some length. If there's one criticism of Spencer Strider this year, he hasn't done a great job of going deep into games. So want to see him do that, especially with the way the rotation is right now. And I don't want to put any added stress on him. I want him to continue to just pitching the way that he has, but would love to see him be able to go a little bit deeper in the game. Maybe work into the, the seventh inning and become that new strikeout leader. He's right there. At the top, you know, even if he just strikes out a couple of batters in this game, I think he'll take over the top spot. Last I looked, he was tied with Blue Jays starter Kevin Gosman at the top of that list. So should be taking over that top spot in strikeouts this year. So looking forward to him doing so. And, yeah, as I record this, he and Kevin Gosman, who the Braves will avoid in this series, both have 67 strikeouts. Shohei Otani at 66. So um, we'll see if Spencer Strider can take over that lead on Friday night as for chris bassett one of the most annoying arms to face last year just because of how long he took he kept shaking off the catcher it was just so annoying to watch hopefully that has gone away uh with not only the pitch clock but now pitchers with pitch com are able to call able to call their own pitches so hopefully no more of that uh he's gone six innings or more in five of his last six starts given two er given up two earned or less in those six starts. So he's been on a really good run lately. His ERA's inflated a little bit. I mean, it's still solid at 4.28, but he gave up nine earned runs in three and a third innings in his first start. And he's really been solid after that. Um, he's really struggled with walks this year, though. In five starts, he's walked at least three batters. So that's something to keep an eye on. He's only allowed two home runs since he gave up four home runs in that first start of 2023 that was so rough for him. So Braves obviously very familiar with Chris Bassett from his days with the Mets. Hopefully they can get after him, get up a good lead. Spencer Strider can do what Spencer Strider does, and the Braves get off to a good start in this three-game series against the Blue Jays on Friday night. Again, that game starts at 7.07 p.m. Eastern. Should be a good challenge against another really good ALEs team. 
Catch every pitch of the Braves' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Braves. That will do it for this episode of Lockdown Braves. Thanks so much for making us your first listen of each and every day. And thank you, to again, to all my everydayers out there. Let me know in the comment section again if you are an everydayer. Love hearing from you. Love where you hear where you listen to the podcast at work, on the way to work, while you're working out, working, working, whatever you're doing. Uh, appreciate all those who listen to the podcast. All right. If you haven't, make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at Lockdown underscore Braves. Follow me at shortstopball. Also, make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to the Lockdown Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast. And we will talk to you next time.